With the success of crime show dramas like NCIS and Criminal Minds, a strong army of citizen detectives is popping up all around the country. People who work their real jobs during the day, but then spend their free time investigating everything from cold case murders to missing children. Crime Watch Daily's Billy Jensen just met up with one man who's using his really unique set of skills to help police solve crimes. Upstate New York, straight out of a 1970s horror film. A teenage girl found dead in a cornfield, shot twice, once in the back and once in the head. With no identification, cops couldn't figure out who she was for years, 35 years to be exact, until a quiet, unemployed accountant put himself on the case. Nobody deserves to be unidentified. Everybody deserves a name. When Carl Koppelman was laid off from his job as a corporate accountant, he found himself at home with a lot of free time on his hands. That's when he became intrigued by Unsolved Mysteries. I became interested when uh, the J.C. Dugard story broke back in 2009. J.C. Dugard was an 11-year-old girl kidnapped in 1991 and uh, didn't show up until 18 years later. While studying the Dugard story, Carl found web sleuths, a website filled with everyday people interested in solving crimes. There, Carl discovered a forum of people dedicated to matching unidentified victims with missing person cases and decided to bring some of his own special skills to the super sleuthing table. I came to the realization that a lot of these forensic drawings weren't really accurate. And being I'm an artist, I decided to start trying to do forensic drawings of my own. And draw he did. Since 2009, Carl has made over 150 forensic age progressions, taking real crime scene photos of victims and bringing intricate details to their faces, hoping someone would identify them. His work has resulted in helping cops, but it was the case of the Jane Doe found in the New York cornfield that haunted Carl and his computer-generated drawings. Callie Doe was one of the cases that, one of the first cases that really caught my attention. Cops called her Callie Doe, short for Caledonia Jane Doe, named after the town near where her body was discovered. Sheriff John York was one of the first on the scene that November day in 1979. The victim, very young girl, shot in the face, uh, shot again through the back, dumped roadside, stripped of identification. You wonder to yourself, what kind of an animal could leave a child laying roadside like that? The suspected runaway was found fully clothed, wearing jewelry, her pockets turned inside out. The coroner believes she was first shot by the side of the road in her back, then dragged into the cornfield and shot in the head above her right eye. Police believed it was a 38 caliber handgun. They buried her as they found her, unidentified. Not only did it become an extreme mystery in the county, it became an extreme mystery in the country. For over 30 years, Sheriff York and his department worked hard trying to identify Callie Doe even testing her teeth and the pollen on her clothes to try to determine where she came from. Cops narrowed it down to Southern California, Arizona, or South Florida. We've worked with authorities in Australia, we've worked with authorities in Canada, and those here in the United States. Anytime that somebody would forward a tip on that they thought that somebody was our Jane Doe, we would look into it. But all leads led to dead ends, and then Sheriff York retired in 2013. Sheriff York, he lived this case. It was his heart, it was his soul. Because of that tenacity in investigations is firmly why it stayed alive, why it went onto the internet, why people stayed involved. The new sheriff vowed to never let the case die. And over the six years, Carl wasn't willing to let the murder Jane Doe stay anonymous either. As cops kept working the case, Carl used autopsy photos to continue updating Callie Doe's drawing, meticulously changing her hair, nose, and skin tone. This was the first attempt that I had done. Uh, it was basically just, you know, trying to straighten out her hair and put her, put an outfit on her and, uh, you know, put eyes on her. My second attempt, then I started working on her hair, giving her a hairstyle. So you had this one photo and then you were able to find another one. Yeah. At a certain point, I got a hold of this other photo, which gave a much better view of her nose. Carl often searched the NamUs website, the National Missing and Unidentified Person System. And one day last September, he saw something that caught his eye, a new listing on a missing girl from Florida. I knew the face because I had studied it for, you know, six years. There, a woman who had been searching in vain for a long lost high school friend contacted the friend's family who had not heard from her in years. Eventually, the girl's high school photo was posted on NamUs in the hopes someone would recognize her. 
And somebody did. I'd only seen her li lifeless prior to that. And now here she is with a smile on her face. It was quite a shock. I went right onto Web Sleuth and put up the words bingo. Carl immediately sent the matching images to investigators. I remember when, when the investigator, Brad Schneider, came in and said, I, I think that we've got an identity for our Jane Doe. And I said, no, come on. He's like, I'm dead serious. Police obtained a DNA sample from whom they believed might be Callie Doe's sister. And they soon got the news they had been waiting on for 35 years. They had a match. For us to get over the initial hurdle of putting a name to this girl after that long, it was huge. The young girl murdered in the New York cornfield now had a name, Tammy Jo Alexander. When Callie was finally identified, it was a sense of relief to finally know her true identity, but it was such a heartbreak that it took so long. After Tammy Jo was identified, some long overdue healing could begin. I wanna say thank you for helping us find Tammy Jo. Many attended Tammy Jo's memorial service, including Sheriff York, Carl, Tammy Jo's family, and her long lost friend. And she finally received a proper headstone. I knew it would take one report to make the difference, and it did. Carl Koppelman will never forget the phone call you made. Now that cops know who Tammy Jo is, the search is on for her killer. I would love nothing more than to find who did this to her and put handcuffs on them. The FBI has put up billboards in the hopes someone with information will come forward. And cops are now looking into Tammy Jo's connection to a prison ministry in Young Harris, Georgia, and a possible connection to the truck stop in Florida where she worked. It's so sad to, to think she was left there and killed the way she was. And for so many years, no one even knew her name. For Carl, his work on Callie Doe is done. But there are others still out there searching for their Jane and John Doe's. For them, Carl never stops drawing. Every family member deserves to know what happened to a missing person. And Crime Watch Daily is teaming up with Carl Copperman to help identify five other victims seen here. If you have any information on these victims or any information on Tammy Joe Alexander's murder, please go to our website, crimewatchdaily.com.